Christmas, part one, the excitement of a new birth. I'm reading today a couple of scriptures as a foundation for this. And the first one's Luke chapter one, verses 26 to 28. And you can certainly tell from these passages that this is already getting close to the Christmas season. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Then in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14, I'm just reading 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Let's pray. Father, as we look in your word today, we're asking for a supernatural visitation of your spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened and that we might also feel your heartbeat, understand your excitement and your enthusiasm about evangelism, new births and new children for your family in Jesus name. Amen. You know, when my big brother was born, I wasn't even around in those days. My father was so excited, he stopped the car on the way home from the hospital, jumped out, and it was a snowy day, believe it or not, because the traffic authority had just placed in the middle of the road a very, very small roundabout fixture. And it was like a shiny silver disc that was sort of like mounted up and it was stuck on the road. And when my dad saw it, he thought it was a hubcap. Yes, it was a long time ago. And he jumped out of his car in the excitement of having a baby and he tried to pick it up and take it home. <laughs> and all the cars in the intersection wondering what he was doing. When Rosanna's brother Henry had his first daughter, he visited his wife in the hospital, but he was so excited he had to tell somebody and he left his wife there and rushed over to our place, knocked on the door and was all beside himself raving on because he had been given this new child and he was very, very excited. Of course, his wife wasn't so excited because she'd experienced a bit of discomfort in bringing his child to pass. And when we saw her, her first words were, why didn't my mum ever tell me what this was like? She wasn't going to have any more children till later on when she did. My friend Ashley Fenn, when he first had his first baby, he was also very excited, a bit outside of his normal personality. And he came rushing around and he was saying, when the baby came out, it was all floppy. <laughs> and of course, way back in the old movies, when the men had a baby, they'd get all their friends together and hand out cigars. And just as human fathers are very excited about the birth of their new children, so God is about his. And we're going to see that in this story today. We're going to see several answers to the question, how do we know that God is excited about evangelism? Number one, he told Mary to rejoice, despite the awkward position it put her in. Luke 1, 26 to 28 says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. So that was God's instructions coming to Mary via the angel. This is what God said, Rejoice. He said, highly favoured. He said, the Lord's with you. You're blessed. He was so excited about this thought of having a baby. He wasn't handing out cigars. He was handing out blessing. He was handing out favour. He was handing out the presence of God with her. And Mary could have gone around describing herself like this. I'm blessed and highly favoured. God is with me. And we should all adopt that as our confession today. Amen. So this was God's instruction. If it was coming from him, it had to be coming from how he felt. 
He was rejoicing. He was going to have a baby. He's ready to hand things out. He was excited about babies. And in a similar way, God's excited about evangelism today. Amen. He's excited about new children coming to birth in his family now and in the immediate future. There's a huge end time in gathering of a billion soul harvest at least to be bought in and God is excited and he wants us to understand that that excitement is coming to us that rejoicing that favor the presence of God when we get involved in this new birth process amen now I know she had some awkward moments and there'll no doubt be awkward moments for all of us but we need the reassurance that God gives and understand that we have angelic hosts that God's going to be with us and he's going to give us favor, 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 lots of rejoicing, lots of new songs, new music, new people around and a very happy father. Amen. So how do we know God's excited about evangelism? Number one, because he told Mary to rejoice despite the awkward position it put her in. Number two today, he led Joseph to commit to his family plan. We see this in Matthew 1.18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. She was found. In other words, people suddenly realized that this young girl just engaged to her fiance was pregnant. This was a shock to her friends, her family, It was certainly a big shock to Joseph, not to mention her parents. They would have not known what to do. What's going on, Mary? You're looking very swell. Oh, yes, I'm pregnant with a baby. You can't be. I am. Is Joseph the father? No, this is God's baby. It's a very special baby. You know, it's it's a very hard conversation to have with your parents and your fiancé. It certainly would have led to a lot of soul searching and some very mixed emotions and some strained relationships. I'm sure her parents were watching Joseph very carefully, wondering if he did it. He's saying, it's not mine. I don't know whose it is. But this was God's baby. Now, Matthew chapter one goes on to say in verses 19 to 21, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, was not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Notice right there in verse 20, do not be afraid. Joseph had to have his fears allayed. And there's only one way to do that. Perfect love casts out all fear. So God had to show love to Joseph in such a way as if to say, everything's okay, Joseph. I'm in this. I'll be with you in it. Fear not. Joseph also had to be convinced that this was of God. And so God went on by the angel to show him very clearly in the scriptures. And there are many in the church today. It's almost like Mary and Joseph represents two aspects of church life. You've got Mary like the evangelist who's all excited about a new baby. Then you've got Joseph who represents those in the church who provide covering, that have got a big picture, that think more about the ramifications, the responsibilities And they need to have their fears allayed, which are understandable in a lot of sense. Because when you bring in a lot of new people, a lot of new souls, new people getting saved, it can disrupt the current situation. It can cause others to get upset. People's emotions can go all over the place. It's like bringing in the new grapes and making fresh wine. There's always going to be a bit of fermentation, a bit of expansion, a bit of pressure on the wine skin. And so some people naturally are concerned about this. It's all right for you young people or you evangelists to be excited about evangelism and new souls, but have you thought about X, Y and Z? We've got to take care of this. We've got to understand what to do. We've got to shepherd this. We've got to watch over it and father this whole movement. So God reassured Joseph 
with his word. And that's what God is going to do for our generation. He's going to allay fears and lay a foundation with his word so that everybody knows that this is not just a whole lot of excitement, but that this is God. Verses 22 to 23. All of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. Remember God said to Mary, I will be with you. And now this is being repeated for Joseph from the word. Amen. God is with us. And then in verses 24 to 25, Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel commanded him, took to him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. It turns out after the reassurance from God and the fear not, he must have felt the love of God, the scriptures, he was happy to comply. He was obedient to honour the true father, and allowed Jesus to be born via a virgin. He didn't mess that up. What an amazingly obedient, compliant, worshipful man he was. And I pray today that we can all learn from that. Amen. So how do we know today that God's excited about evangelism? Number one, he told Mary to rejoice. And number two, he led Joseph to commit to his family plan despite his initial reluctance. And I say, led him because he led him in the right way with love through the word of God and by his presence, bringing a reassurance. Number three today, God went ahead with his family plan despite it not being easy. This is very important. He must be very excited about it to cause people that he's leading to go through these challenges. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. Not a comfortable trip for a man to take with his young wife, pregnant, some say heavily pregnant, and they're going to Bethlehem. I know the Christmas cards say she was riding a donkey, but the Bible doesn't actually say that. But they had to travel this distance. It was a difficult trip but they had to leave where they were and go somewhere that God gave them to go to, to have the new birth. This reminds me of the scripture that says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. At times, God does make us uncomfortable. He makes us go places to see these births come to pass. Amen. It's a going outside of your comfort zone. It could be going on a mission trip, going somewhere else. But most often it's about going next door, going outside of your regular behavior, going to somebody down the street, somebody in a shop, going across a bridge that's not normally crossed to reach someone, going past secure, familiar boundaries, going the extra mile to fulfill God's plan, going to people you don't normally relate to, going across cultural barriers, getting past emotions, normal reservations and shyness and cultures and going past the time limitations and even spending money. But we have to go and we can go via the internet. We can go via church. We can go with a team or we can simply go to a neighbor or go across the boundary of accepted conversation. When we say to someone, can I tell you about Jesus? Has anybody ever told you about God? Do you know who Jesus is? Have you given your life to God? Do you believe in God? There's lots of ways to go across this but it does involve some 
going. And that's an uncomfortable part, but God's willing to go through with this and he wants us to go through with it because the excitement of the birth is important to him. Remember, his word says, the pain may endure for a night, amen, but rejoicing comes in the morning, hallelujah. Verse six to seven, and so it was while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So he told Mary to rejoice. He led Joseph to commit to his family plan and he went ahead with his family plan despite it not being easy. So how else do we know that God's excited about evangelism? Number four today, angels celebrated revealing God's excitement. Now, I want you to note in this passage that the angels are bringing a message from God and they bring it sincerely, perfectly and purely. Therefore, this message contains the emotion with which God sent it. This is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. There it is again. God is saying, Fear not, don't be afraid. Have joy and rejoicing. Verse 11. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. Now, in the Bible, heavenly hosts, he's talking more about soldiers, warriors, and warring angels. And we notice this again, I'm going to say it. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, these are warriors, not singers, amen. (laughs) Praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. It's, It's a kind of a double message here. One is we're ready to fight for this. And the other one is, but we're conveying God's joy and his happiness and we're celebrating. We're overflowing with praise to God. And just to clarify that last verse, I'm going to read it from a different version, which is probably more accurate. And it says in Luke 2:14 in the Berean study Bible, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Amen. So we may have fear about evangelism, but God's saying, do not be afraid. He's excited about some new babies. He's with us in evangelism. And there's a whole lot of angels bringing this message to us, confirming the message and ready to fight as we step out in evangelism. Amen. So number four was his angel celebrated revealing God's excitement around the message. So how do we know God's excited about evangelism? Number five today, the shepherds overflowed what God was feeling. They glorified God and praised God. They were beside themselves like my brother-in-law, like my father when he had a new baby, just doing things absolutely out of character. Luke 2, 15 to 20, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the angels said to one another, Let's now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. Amen. So they're just going around telling everybody, a bit like Rosanna's brother. He left his wife in the hospital and come rushing around to our place to tell us. (laughs) He was just overexcited. And that's what these shepherds did. They were also beside themselves with excitement, even though it's not their own baby, but they were expressing what God was feeling. They were overflowing and they went out and they're telling everybody. Of course, everyone's response to that was like, what's going on? The shepherds are normally sitting out there keeping to themselves, talking farming stuff and 
telling stories about the sheep that got lost for about a hundredth time. But now they're running around excited about a baby. This is what women often talk about, but I've never seen shepherds excited about a baby before. Verse 18, And all those who heard it marveled at those things that were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God. Amen. They overflowed what God was feeling, glorifying and praising him. That's how we know Jesus and the Father are excited about evangelism. It showed up through the shepherds and the angels and Mary and Joseph. Amen. Now, in this story, of course, shepherds always speaks of pastors or pastors and preachers. They get a message from God and they speak it like normal. But when they start speaking this message about the new birth, angels will bring it. Heaven's host will be present, celebrating and fighting for it. Amen. They'll get involved. The joy and the rejoicing will get all over the shepherds. Amen. They'll be telling everyone. And that's a sign that this is God's season for evangelism because we're going to see this As the future unfolds, we're going to see a move of God's excitement and enthusiasm and angelic presence. And they're going to get busy and the war will be on. But these angelic hosts are going to fight with a supernatural strength. Amen. Because the joy of the Lord is is your strength. They're going to have that joy. We're going to have that joy. And we're going to go forwards with it. Amen. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Remember, he said to Mary, the Lord is with you. And God is going to be with us as we go out into this evangelism season. Are you ready for this? Will you be watching for this sign? Will you rejoice with those who rejoice about this over what excites God? New birth, new Christians, new children for his family, expansion to his kingdom. Woohoo! It's going to be a very exciting day. Amen. So number six, how do we know that God's excited about evangelism? Because everyone in the region marveled. Luke 2, 17 to 18. Now, when they had seen him, they made known this saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all those that heard it or heard the shepherds marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. They were astonished, perplexed, and they were amazed. They were just thought, what is going on in that church? Amen. The pastor is excited. There's some presence all around us. This excitement's getting on to everybody all around us. Not long, the whole region heard about Jesus. They heard the story about him, about him being born in a manger, shepherds acting out of character, angels appearing in the paddock to farmers. No wonder they were astonished and marveled and amazed. And I believe whole regions are going to come under this evangelistic excitement, just like what happened back in the Welsh revival of over 100 years ago. Country regions were coming on fire with this excitement. People were crowding into the church. And this is going to happen in regions around Australia and around the world. There's going to be whole regions electrified with this excitement about the birth of new children for God's family. And God's presence is going to be there. God's angels are going to be fighting for this. God's evangelists are going to be excited. But God's overseers are also going to be sure this is true because of the foundation God's laying with his word. Amen. So how do we know God's excited about evangelism? He told Mary, rejoice. He led Joseph, on the other hand, into commitment to his family plan through the word of God and getting him over fear. He went ahead with his family plan despite it not being easy. His angels celebrated, revealing God's excitement. Shepherds overflowed and everyone in the region marveled. And number seven, the wise men rejoiced. Now, we read about the wise men in Matthew chapter 2. This is verses 9 to 11. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they'd seen in the east went before them till it came over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they'd come into the house, they saw the young child 
with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense and myrrh. And as this season of evangelism begins to unfold before us, the worship is going to be just amazing, deep, profound, and people will start to give like never before. Finance will flow. It will flow to finance this end time and to bring safety and rescue for all of those new children that are being birthed into God's family. Because we know in this story, when they gave him all of those gifts, it wasn't long before God appeared to Joseph in a dream again and told him to go into exile in Egypt for the safety of the child. He must have been there for at least two years, if not longer. And during that time, they had the gold, the frankincense and the myrrh to keep them going and to provide for them because God is a genius. And the old word they used to use for this was providence. He sees the need and meets it ahead of time. What a genius God is. So in conclusion, how do we know that God's excited about evangelism? He told Mary, rejoice when she was about to give birth to his child. Amen. Despite the awkward position it put her in, he told her to rejoice. He led Joseph to commit to his family plan despite his initial reluctance. He went ahead with his family plan despite it not being easy. They had to go. We're going to have to go. God's angels celebrated revealing God's excitement around the message. They brought the message and the emotion and the joy, the rejoicing and demonstrated his willingness to fight. Amen. The angels are here now ready to go to war for God's souls to get saved. Number five, shepherds overflowed with what God was feeling. They glorified and praised God. Everyone in the region marveled. They were excited. They were amazed. They were bewildered. They were shocked, astonished, saying, what's going on? We've never seen shepherds acting like this. What's this about angels appearing in the field and babies being born in mangers? This is weird. It's unusual, but it caused them all to talk. Amen. It's a sign to shepherds to see an angel born in a manger but it was also a sign to the whole district to see shepherds acting like that and to know about angels coming into the paddocks. Amen. And so the wise men also rejoiced and they opened up their treasuries and they began to give worship. And these are going to be the signs and the hallmarks of God's excitement over the birth of new children for his family. Amen. Are you as excited as all of these people about God's babies getting birth? Are you as excited as God and his angels? Are you committed to his family plan? Because you know, some parts of it are not going to be easy. You know, weeping may endure for the night, but joy is certainly coming in the morning and we can be part of it. He will allay your fears with his love. His love is poured into your heart. And as that love begins to manifest, and as you pray for the lost, reach out with the gospel, you're expressing love and letting that love out. Amen. And that love will just annihilate and obliterate the fear. He will assure you in his word that evangelism is his will. So be ready for messages on evangelism from all aspects and all angles until everybody, the excited and the very reserved ones, those that are just wanting to get out there and those that are reticent because of experience and understanding some of the costs until everyone comes together around God's word. You know, some people could just get excited about something happening without a foundation, but that's heading for disaster. So God's going to lay a foundation in his word to make sure we are ready. We are in tune with him and his pattern and that we are in unity. Amen. God's going to move powerfully in evangelism, and I think it's going to happen in schools, in parks, in shops, in families, in workplaces, over the internet, at church, in special events. He will take any opportunity, and he encourages us. 
Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. I heard Reinhard Bonnke say this years ago, there was one country he was trying to get into and the doors were shut, the doors were shut. And he said, and then they opened the doors and Bonnke was in, amen. And it's the same with Jesus. He knocks on the door of the heart. We open the door, he's in, amen. And we're going to be the same. We're going to be talking to people, see an opening and in we go with the truth of God's word. And remember, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Not my ideas, and not an argument, not convincing someone by superiority, not ramming it on them, but sharing with humility and love the simple, plain, humble gospel message, understanding that God is love and it is his will for none to perish. And while I'm on this subject today, I want to say to you, it's not God's will for you to perish. To make sure that you won't, Jesus sent his own son to this earth to show what God is like. God is love. God is good. He's infinitely love and he's absolutely good. And there's no variation or shadow of who God is. God's also justice. And we're going to see more of that in the days ahead. But God is love and he doesn't want you to go to hell with the devil and his angels. He doesn't want you to be there paying the consequence for your sin and the things you've done wrong because that's what his perfect justice would require. But to make sure you don't have to, Jesus himself took upon his body the punishment due for your sins. He was whipped. He was crucified, pierced, nailed, crown of thorns on his head. He died. He went to hell and he was there for three days. And then the father said, the death of Jesus has fully paid for everything that you've done wrong, that I've done wrong, that every human's done wrong. And because of that, Jesus was able to rise from the dead. His resurrection proves that his plan worked. Amen. And now there's nothing to stop anybody receiving God's pardon through the forgiveness of sin, being born again, as Jesus calls it, into God's family and being part of his eternal future of joy and of love and of peace and of just exciting things in heaven. Now, if you haven't done this, this is your opportunity to receive Jesus, asking forgiveness of sins, turning from your old life and receiving his new birth. It's easy to get started. And then after that, you just keep following Jesus and confessing that he is Lord. Today, all you have to do to get started is simply say a prayer, mean it with your whole heart, throw your faith into Jesus and believe that he loves you and he's going to come into your life and change you on the inside and expunge your past annihilate your old track record and give you such a new start that it can only be described as being born again. No record of past sin ever existing and that you're in his book of life and that he is now your Lord, not the devil. Repeat this prayer after me. Say this, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I know that you paid for my sins and I believe you rose from the dead showing that they are fully paid. Today, Lord Jesus, I turn from my old life. I receive you as my saviour. I confess that you are my Lord and I receive your Holy Spirit. Today, Lord Jesus, I believe I'm born again. I believe my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I will follow you from this day forward, confessing Jesus is my Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, God bless you. If you prayed that prayer today, I believe that you've been born again. Your name's in the book of life 
And from this moment on, you're in God's kingdom, not the devil's. You're God's very own child, and he will look after you as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. Stay in the word of God. Keep reading. Keep watching these messages and follow him. And please get some good Christian friends around you or make some Christian friends and be part of a church if you can get there. If you're a shut-in or can't get out to church, then keep watching our messages and our online service in Jesus' name. And today I also want to pray for the rest of us that we would see what God's plan for the future is and just how excited he is about evangelism and new children for his family. Father, I pray for each one of us today that we would see that this is God speaking to us, that he's excited about this. I pray that your love would allay our fears, that you would reveal your word to us more and more to give us the scriptural foundation and that you would show us the open doors and give us your grace to be able to travel through the boundaries, over bridges, across the things we have to cross and away from our comfort zones to bring this exciting message to people. And today, Father, I know your angels will be fighting with us and for us, and there will be signs, there will be wonders, and there will be changes all around us. I pray again today, Father, for your courage and boldness to make known the mystery of the gospel as we ought to make it known in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.